In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my ultimate beginner's guide to Automobilista 2 for 2024. We'll be going through where to get Automobilista 2 and how to install it. We'll be working our way through all of the settings within the game to, and including force feedback and graphic settings. I'll show you how to get Crew Chief and Sim Hub and AMS2 all playing nicely together and we'll also be installing the AMS2 Content Manager. And then I'll walk you through how to install modded cars, tracks and liveries to take your AMS2 installation to the next level. So stick around until the end of the video for that. So first up you're going to need Automobilista 2 installed and if you don't have that already you can either purchase this through Steam or there are a few sites which I've used in the past where you can purchase digital game keys from. You can then activate this key within Steam and it will download the game for you. I'll leave links down in the description below for everything you might need in this video. Now once you have AMS2 installed you're going to want to launch it but don't do that just yet. Before we do I wanted to talk about anisotropic filtering. Now it's much better to have your graphics card handle this rather than your CPU because it brings a far better performance benefit. Now I have an Nvidia graphics card and so because of this I have this set in the Nvidia control panel. Now if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, to open up the NVIDIA control panel, simply right click on your desktop and select NVIDIA control panel from the list that's shown. Once that's open, click on manage 3D settings on the top left and then on the right hand side of the screen, click on the program settings tab. Now where it says select a program to customize, click on that drop down and search for the Automobilista 2 program in the list. If that doesn't show, click the add button and if it still doesn't show in the list of programs shown, and that list could be very long, click on the browse button at the bottom. Next, navigate to your Steam library installation folder. Mine is on my E driver shown, but yours might be elsewhere. Click on the Steam library folder, click on the Steam apps folder, and then double click on the common folder. Next, double click on the Automobile Lista folder and then scroll all the way down until you find the AMS2AVX.exe. Select that and click open. Now, as you'll see on screen, these are my settings for the AMS2XE. There's the 16 times for anisotropic filtering. And if I just scroll down a little bit more, there are a few other settings that I have changed and I'll leave them on screen for you now. So next, it's time to launch Automobile Lista 2. Now, when you click Launch in Steam, you're going to be shown three options. The first option is what you'd select if you're using a single monitor or monitors. The second option is to launch the game in VR using the Steam VR application. The third option is to launch the game in VR for Oculus headset. So if you don't have an Oculus headset, you're going to want to install the Steam VR application and you can find this in Steam. If you have an Oculus headset, make sure you've downloaded the Oculus desktop app. Again, links are down in the description below. Now, if you're only ever going to launch Automobilista 2 with one option, you can tick the box at the bottom which says always use this option. Next, click play. And if you have an Oculus headset and you want to know how to get the best out of it, check out the card that I'm putting on screen now, which is my video on how to configure your Oculus Quest 2 or Quest 3 headset to get a great experience in AMS 2. Now, if you choose the Steam option, you don't need Steam VR running beforehand. Once you choose that option, it will load Steam VR for you and then it will port you straight into AMS 2. Now I have a MetaQuest 3 headset and so I choose the Oculus option to launch AMS2, but choose whichever option fits your requirements. And if you're finding this video useful, drive straight into that subscribe button to get notified of more content like this. What we're going to be doing next is configuring AMS2 to get the best experience out of it. Now it's important to note that after choosing one of these options, any changes that you make within AMS2 are stored separately. So there's a separate configuration file for monitors, for Steam VR headsets and for Oculus VR headsets. Once you're inside AMS2, it's tempting to just jump in and drive, but there are a few things we need to change first. So click on options at the top and then click on gameplay. So here is where we set options to make the game more authentic. Options such as driving assists, damage, mechanical failure, tire wear, etc. Now I have a wheel and not a controller, but if you look at the top, you'll see the LB and RB buttons are shown for those with controllers to help you navigate the menu system. Next, we'll select display. 
These are the options you choose to show what you want to see on the display for yourself. Next, we're going to go into controls, and this is where you'd set up your wheel, your pedals, your controller, your keyboard, your button box, etc. And as you can see here, I've got my Fanatec DD2 and wheel selected and configured. So if we click on the configuration submenu here, we'll see there's various dead zones and sensitivities, and there's even controller damping and vibration here at the bottom. Next, if we click on edit assignments, this is where you map all of your inputs, such as steering, throttle, brake, gear up or gear down. If you click on vehicle, you can map a start button. You can map ignition, ERS, pit limiter buttons. If we click assistance here, we can set traction control, ABS, steering and braking assists. If we click camera and view here, we can map buttons to your seating position and camera settings. And if we scroll down, here's a bonus tip for you. If you use VR and you're in VR, make sure to map a button to your steering wheel or a keyboard or a button box, whatever's suitable for you. This will come in very handy because if you're anything like me, I'm always in awe when I'm thrown into a car in VR and I'm just too busy looking around inside the cockpit that my view just doesn't get centered. But with a button mapped on my steering wheel, I can simply press it and off I drive. And finally, the last sub menu under assignments is game. And in here you can set car management functions and other options. Next up is force feedback and this is a whole topic in itself. I've left a link down in the description below to a Reza forum post which has the recommended settings for each manufacturer's wheelbase within it. Now on top of those values such as gain and damping, there are force feedback types such as default, default plus and a custom force feedback file. I would say try default initially and if you find it lacking then try default plus and if you're still not satisfied then try a custom force feedback file. Next is system and for those that want to use crew chief or sim hub these are the settings on screen now that you need to set in AMS2 to be able to get those to talk to each other. Now if you see any warnings after changing any of these settings within AMS2 saying that you need to restart after changing the settings then simply exit all the way out of the game and relaunch it like you did before. Next we're going to click into visual effects and these are visual effects essentially that improve the visuals such as raindrops, screen dirt, cockpit mirrors, sun flare, exterior and interior and as we click back and we head into performance and as you can see here at the top, that is the resolution. Now, if you're in running monitors or a single monitor, this is the resolution, the max resolution and refresh rate that you would set to match that of your monitor. I run VR as I explained, so this is why I have this set to 1920 by 1080. This isn't the resolution within the headset of the, of the game. This is the resolution for the menu systems you see in VR when you launch the game. Here we can see anisotropic filtering is set to two times. That's because you can't turn this off within AMS2. So as I explained before, I have this set to 16 times in the NVIDIA control panel, and I have it here in game set to two. And as I scroll down, here are the rest of the performance settings. These are the values that I have set these two, so I'll leave them on screen for you now. Next up is the virtual reality tab. And as you can see here, there are a couple of options with recentering the view on boot up into the game or when you start a race. Here you can also see the super sampling setting. The, I've left this at default at 1.0 and that's because I change all of my settings within the Oculus desktop app or the Oculus debug tool. If we click back, the next option is the camera settings. And here we have field of view. Now I race in VR, so these settings are completely irrelevant, but this is where you would set your field of view parameters. If we just click on movement, here you'll see we can set values for sort of G-force effects, lateral and longitudinal movements, whether we show the helmet on or not, increase or decrease the amount of head movement, helmet leaning, camera leaning, etc. And if we click into audio, again, these are all set to default. I haven't changed these. My audio device is set to, as you can see at the bottom, to my Oculus virtual headset there. But here you can adjust various volumes within the game, such as the pit radio volume or tire volume. And finally, the triple screen. Now, I don't have triple screens. I race in VR. I have a single 49-inch ultra-wide to help me launch the game. But this is where you would enter your bezel settings and your physical height and width of each monitor. And that is it for settings. Now, let's talk about what we do next to get out on track. 
So let's choose test day. And as you can see on the left hand side, we have session settings. And if we click in here, we can choose a default date. We can choose a specific date, a specific time of day. We can choose weather slots. We can choose the actual weather forecast. So as you can see here, we can set the number of weather slots. And if we choose three and we click on the first, we're going to set this to clear just there. If we click on the second one, we'll set the second one to some light cloud. And for the third slot, we're going to choose light rain. And we'll scroll to the bottom and click save, then click back. And if we click on the vehicle selection in the middle, here you'll see we're shown an alphabetical list of car groups. And as we click on each group, we're shown the cars that are inside of those groups, as you can see. Now we can also choose to show the cars as a list. So if we click on the list icon, we can see the cars, we can see the groups, we can see the type of car, and we can also choose to show the cars by type. So here you can see Brazilian series, prototypes, GT and touring types of cars, historic touring, formula cars, oval cars, club cars, street cars, carts off-road so if we click back on the lists let's scroll down and choose one of the latest lmdh cars and as you can see you can see them within a virtual showroom like shown we can click on the livery select button to show all the liveries and choose what livery we want to have displayed and at the bottom we're shown all of the technical information about the car displacement horsepower onboard turbo its electronics types and if we click select and if we click on circuit selection on the right hand side just like with the cars we can choose the tracks by its location as we click on Le Mans here you can see we've got the two types of tracks the sectors the length of the track we're going to choose this one the Le Mans circuit and then to drive we just click the start button at the bottom now let's talk about how we create a race so if we click on the race button you can see on the left hand side we have race settings here where we set the number of laps and the weather at the bottom we have session settings where we can determine if we want to have practice or qualifying enabled we have opponent settings here where we can choose the maximum number of cars their skill level their aggression level we can even choose rules and regulations so we can set pit exit penalties for course yellows etc and we can even choose a preset event selection. So if we scroll down, we can choose one for LMDH and GT3 Gen 2 cars. And to start the race, we can just click the start button. Now let's talk online races. So if we click the multiplayer button and we give it a few seconds, you'll see here it's looking for the sessions to join. And there you see all of the races that are available at the time of recording. And you can see on the right hand side you have a join button there it tells you what class that they are whether it's a multi-class gt4 gt3 formula ultimates formula classics what track they're at and here if you click into one of them you can see the settings whether fuel is any mechanical failures are allowed various settings there and you just click the join button on the top right that will join you into the online race now, depending on what time of day or day you click on that option, you may not see a lot of online races available, but there are plenty of other groups, other online racing lobbies, and I will leave links down to a few that I'm aware of in the description below. Next, let's talk about time trials. And in Automobilista, they have an event called Time Trial of the Week. And as you can see here at the time of recording, these two events are available and it shows you all the details, the track, the car types that are available to you to choose. You can see these are the upcoming events and if you click on finished, you're shown the finished events. And finally, let's talk about mods. Now there's a growing list of track mods and car mods and liveries that have been released, have been ported across to AMS2 and a tool that helps you install those super, super easily is the Automobilista Content Manager tool, which you're seeing on screen now. Again, link is down in the description below. 
All you need to do is to be signed into Race Department and then click on that download button on the top right hand side to download it. There is also a very helpful Discord channel for AMS2's content manager. Again, I will leave a link down in the description below. I highly recommend joining that for future releases. But once your download has finished, double click on the file and then extract the contents to your desktop. Now a single file will be placed on your desktop, double click it. If you see a screen that pops up like this, the file should be pretty safe considering you've downloaded it from Race Department. I wouldn't recommend downloading it from anywhere else. But click on Run Anyway. Then click Next. Click Accept the License Agreement. Now I'm going to install mine. The default is to install it on the C drive. I'm going to install mine on the D drive. Then click the Install button. And if you see a pop-up saying, do you wish to allow this app to make changes to your device? Click Yes. And once the application's copied the files, click on the Finish button. Now, if we were to double click on this icon and I'll show you now, you'll see that it comes up pretty empty. So there's nothing shown in the list. And that's because we haven't downloaded any tracks or cars or liveries yet. So we're gonna do that next. So close down AMS2's content manager. And in the links down in the description below, if you click on the Thunder Flash mods link, this will allow us to now download a good selection of cars. So here we are on Thunder Flash's website here. And if you click on the link in the latest post you'll see here on screen it will take us to a media fire destination and as you can see towards the bottom of the screen there are the car packs there now if you have a premium or sorry a pro media fire account you can just download the entire folder once uh, with all of these mods in but if you don't and i don't then you have to download them individually. But don't worry, it doesn't take long at all. It took me about five minutes to download, I think about 26 mods here in this list. And another good resource is the mods from the Project Cars modding team here that you can see on screen. They have cars, they have tracks, they have drive lines, and as we scroll down here are just some of the mods that have been ported across to AMS2. Some beautiful, beautiful machines here. As you can see, the notes say whether they're compatible with the current or the latest version of AMS2 or not. Beautiful, beautiful 992 there. Here we can see at the top we have AMS2 tracks. We click on that link at the top. And similar to the cars, as we scroll down, we'll see a number of images of each track, along with some notes underneath of things to pay attention to. And if we just click on the download button of all the tracks that we want to download. And once all of those are downloaded, we're now going to install those with AMS2 Content Manager. So launch AMS2 Content Manager and find your downloads folder. Highlight all of the downloads that you've just done and just drag them into the Content Manager application. As you'll see, as you scroll down, all of those are listed. If you click the apply button now, the application will work through installing all of these mods for you. Now, some of them may take some time. Some of the tracks are very, very large, but once that's done, click on the blue close button and close down Content Manager. Now we can launch AMS2 and jump into one of the mods or drive around on one of the mods. I'm going to choose the Berno track from the Czech Republic. Amazing track. First experienced it in a set of Corsa. I'm super, super excited to test this in AMS2 and I'm going to choose the Lamborghini Huracan that we downloaded also. So here we are on the Lamborghini Huracan at the Berno track and as you can see it, it is a great mod. It looks absolutely beautiful. Car drives beautiful, sounds beautiful, track looks amazing. You've got the Project Cars 2 billboards there that you can see. Absolutely amazing. Awesome job by the modders. This is only possible through the help of them and we know what a great job the modding community did to Assetto Corsa. So I look forward to more mods. And if you're looking to take your sim racing experience to the next level, check out the video that I'm putting on screen, which is 10 game-changing apps every sim racer needs. Catch you in the next one.